Let's talk about the null space of a matrix. By definition, the null space of an m by n matrix, in which we write it as null a, is the set of all solutions to the homogeneous equation that matrix times x equals 0. In set notation, that just means that the null space of A is the set of x such that ax equals 0. It's the same thing, just in more compact form. So let's go ahead and compute one of these. Let's say this is my matrix A. I'm trying to solve this thing A times x equals 0. Well, as we've done many times, we can do this by doing row operations and getting it down to reduced row echelon form. Now, technically, we've got to augment this matrix, but as we've done in the past, we're just augmenting it with zeros. None of our row operations affect those zeros, so not really a point to putting them in there. Now, this is a very simple matrix, so there's not a whole lot to do. I can say that row 2 becomes 1 half row 2, and all that's going to do is change that 2 to a 1. Then we can go ahead and say row 1 becomes negative 4 row 2 added to row 1. But then all that's going to do is take that 1 and change that 4 to a 0. So, in reduced row echelon form, we've got 1, negative 6, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 1, 0. So what does this mean about our null space? Well, if we transform these things back into equations, the second one just becomes x3 has to be equal to 0. The first one becomes x1 minus 6x2 equals 0, or x1 equals 6x2. So what does that mean? Okay, it means we've got a vector here. x3 has to be 0. x2 can be anything. Let's go ahead and call that t. But then x1 would have to be 6t. Now, it is important to realize here that we actually have a four-dimensional vector, but that x4 is always being multiplied by 0, so it doesn't matter what that thing is. So we would go ahead and use some other parameter here, like s. So solutions are of the form like this. Anything of this form is going to be in the null space of this matrix. We can go ahead and take this vector then, and we can write it as t times 6, 1, 0, 0, plus s times the vector 0, 0, 0, 1. So one way we can say the null space of this thing is It's the span of these two vectors. It's the span of 6, 1, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, one question you may have is, why do we call this thing a null space? Well, the reason for that is that the null space is actually a subspace of Rn. Remember, we've got an m by n matrix A, so the width of this thing is the size of the vectors in this, and so the null space of A is a subspace of Rn. To remember, there were three things we had to check to show that something was a subspace. We had to show that it had a zero vector. Well, that's pretty easy because if I take a times a zero vector with n, 
I'm going to get a zero vector with m. Zero vector with n elements gives me a zero vector with m elements. That just has to do with the normal way that matrix multiplication works. And certainly multiplying by zeros always gives me zeros. So certainly the zero vector with n elements is in the null space of A. Is it closed under addition? Well, suppose that A times x1 was equal to a zero vector and A times x2 was equal to a zero vector. Well, then a times x1 plus x2, since matrix multiplication distributes, this is ax1 plus ax2, which would be a zero vector plus a zero vector, which is a zero vector. If x1 and x2 are in the null space, then x1 plus x2 is in the null space, so it's closed under addition. Similarly, if ax equals 0, a times cx is the same thing as c times ax. c times the 0 vector is a 0 vector. So it's got a 0 vector. It's closed under addition. It's closed under scalar multiplication. That means that the null space of A is a subspace of Rn.